In this video, I'm going to walk you through some of the pages of chapter 13. Now, there's a lot of stuff in this chapter that you're going to need to pause the video for and read on your own. This is really important because we don't have images for every single page, but you may be tested on it. So let's get started. Okay, troubleshooting Photoshop problems. Make sure you pause this video now and read this page. Save an image with a transparent background. So you should have already downloaded all of the images for this, and we're gonna be opening this first image here, one logo. I'm gonna click on it, drag it, and open it in Photoshop. So if you remember from last week, we talked about different types of files, and one of those files is PNG. PNG files allow you to save an image with a transparent background. This can be really great, especially for logos. So if we go ahead and delete this layer by clicking on the, on the lock and then drag it to the trash can, we now have a transparent background. If we come up to File, Save As, we can now save it as PNG. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And now this is going to be a image that you can actually pull onto other images. And even though it might look like it's white on the background here, when you pull it onto another image, it will in fact have a transparent background. So before we move on, I want you to go ahead and make your own watermark using this method. So let's add a new layer. And let's delete this one. I'm going to bring up my text tool, click in this file, and type my name. I'm going to grab my move tool, move this to the center. So now I'm going to click on my text tool again and we have in the options bar a bunch of different things we can do. First off, I'm going to go ahead and change this to black and I'm going to go and look through my different fonts and decide which one I want to choose. Choose whatever font you want to use for yours. You might not have the same fonts as I do, but that's okay. Just pick one that you like. If it doesn't quite fit, we can do a couple things. We can either resize the text or make the canvas a little bit larger. Let's go ahead and go to the crop tool. And I'm going to make this a little bit bigger here and here and pull this down here. I'm going to go ahead and hit return. And now I'm going to save this by using save as. And I'm going to rename this Redondo Logo. And make sure that you change this from Photoshop to PNG. All right, go ahead and click Save. All right, so let's go ahead and move on. Make sure you pause this video and read this page. Now that you've read that previous page, let's put a frame around your image. So let's go back to our files and we are going to open up these three files. So I'm going to click on the first one. I'm going to hold down shift, click on the third one, selecting all three. Then I'm going to click and drag over to Photoshop. Now that we have these three open, there are two ways that we can actually do this. The instructions in the book say to create a brand new layer and then come up here to filter, come to render, and go to picture frame. Now once again for some reason I'm having issues with my Photoshop. So if yours opens up just fine, no problem, go ahead and open it up and follow the instructions on the page. If you have a similar error as I do, we can do something a little bit different. Remember there's multiple ways to do everything in Photoshop. As long as you know the tools, um, you can come up with another solution. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK and OK. 
And now instead, I'm going to come over here to my black frame. I'm going to get my move tool. I'm going to click here in the layer and drag it up to this other image and pull it over here. All right, so now I need to fit this in the frame. What I'm actually going to do is make my canvas size larger for here because I want to create this effect where we have a matting or that white paperish looking stuff around the image. So I'm going to come up here to image canvas size. And right now I have 20 inches by 13.333 inches. So I'm going to add, um, I want to add three inches on each side. So that means adding six inches to the width and six inches to the height. So I'm going to put 26 here. And for this one, I'm going to add six inches. So that's 19.333. Now that I've done this, I'm going to take my frame and I'm going to free transform it by going to edit, free transform. You can also hit command T. So now I'm going to pull it up here so that it's covering going across the entire image. Okay, looking good so far. Now I actually wanted a white mat, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to this layer one here and I'm going to fill it with white. So I'm going to come up here to edit, fill, and make sure that it's on white and click OK. So now that I've done that, I'm going to turn this off for a moment and I'm going to get my rectangular marquee tool, click on the corner here, and go to the other corner. I'm going to turn my white layer back on and I'm going to click on the mask tool. This creates a mask but it actually created uh, the opposite of what I wanted. So what I can do is invert this mask by hitting command I. Okay, looking good. So now to sell the effect, uh, you know, we have this 3D looking look on the frame, so we want that to also come across on the mat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click in here and we're going to add a bevel to the mat. I'm going to come here to bevel and emboss and click on it. And I want to make sure that I have an inner bevel. I want to chisel hard and I'm going to add a little bit of depth to this. Now I want to look, now the effect is happening right here on the edge and on the frame the light is coming in from up here so I want to make sure that the light is also matching that. So I'm going to pull this over here and now it's giving me the shadow part of the inside of the mat on this side as it would be with the similar light source. It's exactly what we want. Now what else can I do? There would usually be a very slight shadow on the inside of the mat on the image. So I'm going to click on drop shadow. And you can see where that is right there. So now I'm just going to pull the distance down a bit and just play with that. It's a very subtle effect, but these subtle effects is what ends up selling the effect in the long run. One more thing I'm going to do is I want I don't want it to be just white. I want it to look like it has maybe a little bit of a texture to it. So I'm going to come over here to Pattern Overlay and click on here. And I'm going to click on Watercolor. And if you zoom in, you can see now that there is this texture happening on here. So now you can play with the opacity of that. So it's very slight. All right, and click OK. All right, now we're really selling this effect. So now that I have these three, I'm going to, um, I want to actually place this in a living room setting. Now I might change my mind on maybe the frame color or the mat size or something. So before I merge these layers, I'm actually going to make copies of them. I'm going to click on this first one, hold down shift, click on the last layer. I'm going to right click and go to duplicate layers. I'm going to click OK. 
And now I have these three layers here. I'm going to right click again on these three that are selected. And I'm going to come to Merge Layers. Now they're all on one layer together. From here, I'm going to click on this layer and drag it onto our living room image. Once I get it onto the living room image, I'm going to let go. And it is quite a bit bigger than our living room image, so we need to resize it. Again, we need to go to Free Transform, which is Edit, Free Transform, or Command T. If you can't see the bounding box, zoom out of it. There it is. I'm going to hold down Shift and bring it in. Okay, looking good so far. Now, one thing that I do want to do is I want to add just a very slight shadow so it looks like it's really hanging on the wall. So again, I'm going to double click here and we're going to go to Drop Shadow. Now that looks way too intense. Uh, that looks like it's floating off of the wall. So we want to change this up a bit. Let's pull the distance in. There we go. And we actually want to keep with the same idea of the way that the light is going. So let's move the light back over this way. And there we go. Now one more thing I want to do with this image is um, it looks a little bit flat, the living room and it's not really vibing exactly how I wanted with like the coral look in here and the pillows and the blues. So I'm going to come to the background and I'm going to add a curves layer. I'm going to bring down my blacks a little bit. Okay, and maybe just my whites a little bit too. Bring my whites up, blacks down. I have a bit more contrast in there, a little bit more saturated colors, and it's looking a lot better now. Awesome. So now that I'm done with this, Make sure that history is open and your panels are open and take your screenshot. And go ahead and save. I'm going to go to Save As. And change this to Redondo. Okay, awesome. Let's go ahead and close these ones down. Oh, but before I do that, let's take a look at our logo that we created. So here's the one that I had. I'm going to drag this over into Photoshop and let go. And now I have this logo here that has a transparent background. You can see if I place it over this. It is transparent, and yeah, so that's what a PNG does for you. Pretty cool. All right, this isn't my photo, so I'm not gonna leave my name on it. This is actually by Eddie Tapp. And just a reminder to everybody, whatever photos I give to you to work on during the semester, they are just for classwork. You cannot use these same images for any of your personal work or your portfolio work. It would be against copyright. We're gonna go a little bit more into copyright later in the semester. Just wanna give you a heads up. So I'm going to go ahead and just hit delete and let's move on. So next is drawing a straight line with a brush. Now this one's a really simple one, but there has been a change in the book since it was published. So let's go ahead and open our image, which is three, drag it over here to Photoshop. And now if we bring up our brush tool and we click, now here it just says to click and click. You actually have to hold down shift and then click again. And if you keep holding down shift and clicking with the brush tool, you can create these straight lines and make all kinds of cool geometric type things going on. So make whatever design you want using this method. And when you're done, go ahead and take your screenshot. Oh, let's make sure that we have our history panel open. Let's take our screenshot, save as, add our last name, close, and move on. Pause the video now and read this page on setting your color space.
getting more than just one undo, using bridge to quickly find an image or rename images, saving your selection to reuse again, saving images in multiple size and formats, creating a contact sheet, reducing the intensity of an edit, converting to CMYK, opening your raw image in 16-bit mode, expanding and contracting a selection, saving files as JPEGs or TIFFs, making your JPEGs automatically open in camera raw, and then once you get to this page, come back to the video and I'll show you how to do this. Okay, so now that you've read those other pages, let's go to the select hair tutorial. We're going to open up this number four by clicking and dragging it over to Photoshop. And we're going to select the hair so that she looks like she is just against this background image. Now this has changed significantly from the book. So if we come over here to our magic wand tool, in the options bar, we have what's called select subject. Go ahead and click on that. So it's done a pretty good job of selecting my subject, but there are some areas that are missing. We're going to take away from the selection by holding the option key. It has a little, um, now we have the little magic wand tool with a minus next to it. And click on this white area. I'm going to zoom in a little bit and take a look around. Okay, let's do the same here and here, here. Okay, looking pretty good, but obviously there's still a lot of areas where this hair is where there's still the white showing through. Now back in the day, we would have had to do some serious, serious work to select all of this hair, but Photoshop has gotten so much better. We actually have, um, some more ways to take care of this a lot faster and easier. So now that we have this basic selection, I'm going to come up here to the options bar and click on select and mask. So there's a few things once we get into this window that we can do. Right over here under properties we have a view mode and we can decide on different types of way to view this image on top of the layers. This can be really helpful like if you were going to put her on black, on white it wouldn't be well, that's what she was already on, but it wouldn't be much of an issue. Black and white. I'm going to go ahead and use on layers because we already have that layer in the background so we can see how good of a job it's doing. So now I'm going to come over here and we have some tools up here. We have a quick selection tool, refine edge brush tool, brush tool, object selection tool, lasso, polygonal lasso, hand tool, and your zoom tool. I'm going to come up here to Refine Edge Tool and I'm just going to go around to these light areas and brush over them. And you can see as I'm brushing, it's doing a pretty good job of picking out what's going on, what should be there and what isn't. Alright, I'm going to speed this up real quick while I brush over these areas. Okay, so now that I've brushed over all of these areas, I'm going to come over here and turn on my Smart Radius and pull the radius up just a little bit. Let's say three pixels. And this is just the computer trying to help you out a bit. Now we can still see that there is some white issues, so I'm going to shift the edge, which is just basically like that expand and contract of your selection. And I'm going to go into the minus area a bit and taking it in and it's looking pretty good. I'm also going to click on this decontaminate colors and that's going to help also take some of that white away. Alright, so now that we've done this uh, we can also see that there's maybe a few places we missed so go ahead and try going over those areas with your brush a bit.
Okay, we're looking pretty good. Now the next part we're going to do is come down here to output to. There are a couple of different uh, things you can output to. If we already had a selection or a layer mask, then those options would not be grayed out. I'm going to go to new layer with layer mask and click OK. All right, so now you can see that we have this layer here with the layer mask and she is completely cut out and now sitting on our background. Sweet. Go ahead and make sure that your history panel is open, your layers panel is open, and take your screenshot. Now I'm going to come here, save as, and add my name in here. All right, let's move on. Go ahead and pause the video and read this page on removing tourists from a scene. Now that you've finished reading that previous page, let's move on to the final project for this chapter, creating fine art montages. Now for this one, I want you guys to have some fun and make your own image. We'll be sharing this in our discussion board. So first of all, we are going to load files into a stack. So we're going to come up here to file, whoops, making sure we're in Photoshop, file, scripts, load images into stack. This is just going to load all the images we're using for this into one Photoshop file. So let's click on browse and click on the first montage file, pull down shift and click on the fourth one. And go ahead and click open. Now let's go ahead and click okay. And give it a moment while it loads everything. Now from here, this is where you get to be creative. You get to play around with some different ways on how to blend these images. I'm going to start off with, let's say, oh, I want my background to be the sky. So I'm going to start off with the sky here. And I'm going to take this image and stretch it across. So I'm going to hide this for just a moment. And while I have this, the windows selected, the windows layer, I'm going to hit Command T to go to Free Transform. And I'm going to click here and drag it across. I'm going to hit Return to keep that transformation. And I'm going to double click on the thumbnail of this. And we're going to play with Blend If. Now, Blend If, we have this area that says this layer and underlying layer. We have this black area that goes to white and these two little triangles. So if, we're, if we have this layer, if we're playing with that one, we're telling it that we don't want to use, if I'm moving this one, we don't want the black areas to show up. So the more I move it, the darker and darker and darker areas start to go away. And if you want a smoother transition, hold down the Option key and click on one side of this little arrow and it splits. It becomes like a little feather. You can do the same thing the opposite way. We can go this way with it. And now the light areas of the image is not showing through here. We can also split this by holding the Option key and giving it more of a feather. We can do the same thing with the underlying layer. So right now we're going to tell it that the darkest areas we do want to come through from the sky image. That's the underlying layer underneath this layer right now. So as I move this over, there's not any super dark areas, but as I start getting into the middle areas, it starts to come through. Again, holding down the Option key to split these will give it a more of a feathered, softer look. And you can actually play with both of these. While we're here, we can also change the blend mode. So if you want to play with changing it up and trying something else, you totally can. I think I'm going to go with screen. And now I'm going to click OK. Now if you ever wanted to change this again, now we have this little icon on the side of the layer where you can double click 
and you're right back where you were before and you can change it up. So now I'm going to go ahead and add this other figure here. I'm going to turn this layer on and this time I'm going to play with selecting again. So I'm going to click select subject and it looks like it did a pretty decent job. Let's zoom in and take a look. But it, it did miss some things. So for this blue area, I don't want the blue area, so if I click Option, if I hold down Option and then click on the blue, it will take away that part from the selection. If I hold down Shift, it'll add to the selection, like this little part of the ear right here. So go ahead and go around this area and take away areas or add them in as necessary. If it doesn't add an entire area, just go ahead and click, keep clicking. And once it gets the most of it, you can actually change over to your quick selection tool and just go over this area and it'll start picking it up. When you're using selection tools, really it's just about using whichever one is working best for what you're trying to do. You don't always have to use the same selection tool. That's why we have different selection tools. I'm going to switch back to my magic wand tool I'm, and I'm going to hold down option while I click on this little blue area. And if you're having a hard time, if you're clicking and it's not doing something, uh, zoom in and it'll be easier. And let's try getting this part. Looks good. That's holding shift to add to your selection. Okay, so now that we have our basic selection down, we're going to come up here to Select and Mask. So again, we can go ahead and play with our radius a bit, turning on the Smart Radius, see how that helps. And it looks like it smoothed out what was going on with the spear up here, which is awesome. If you need to play with some of this other stuff, you totally can. Up to you. Now I'm going to go to output 2 and I'm going to do, I could do new layer with layer mask. I can also just go to layer mask and click OK. Now I have a layer mask on here. Sweet. Let's move our, let's go to our move tool by hitting V. Click and drag this where you would like it to be. Now again, you can play with whatever you want. I really want you guys to put your own stamp on this. Um, assignment and do what you want with it. You can play with things like fill, you can play with the opacity, you can double click again and play with the blend if. You can even play with the layer order. And of course, don't forget your blend modes. And if you need to go back and play with one of these other uh, layers, go right ahead. Sometimes that's just what you do in Photoshop. You just play around and see what's working. Okay, so our last layer is some text. And again, I'm going to free transform by hitting Command T. Oh, and I'm on the wrong layer. See, I'm on this layer here. I knew that because the bounding box came all the way over here instead of being right around here. So I'm going to hit the cancel right up here. 
make sure I select my correct layer, hit Command T, and now I'm going to go ahead and hold down Shift and stretch this across, and then hit Return. I'm going to double click on the thumbnail, and because I want the black writing to come through, but I want the lighter paper to not be here, I'm going to go ahead and click right over here and pull this in. So I'm telling it blend if it is this bright, this light areas. Hold down the option key to split this and give it a little bit more of a feather. And then again, you can play with the layer styles. I'm sorry, the blend modes are right over here. Okay, so this is my version. Uh, don't do exactly what I did. I want you to play around and make your own version and play with what you think is better. Maybe you want to move the sky and change the sky up. Maybe you want to move him so he's looking the sculpture and he look, looks like he's going through the windows. You could totally do that too. There's really all kinds of different things you can do here. It's really up to you and your imagination. So have fun with this, and when you're done, make sure you open up your history panel, make sure your layer panel is open, hit, take your screenshot, and then go to File, Save As. And I'm gonna call this Redondo Montage. And here's my Photoshop file. Now, if you remember from our other lectures, I'm also going to call this working because this is my working file. Some people prefer to use master file. That's fine. Whatever makes sense to your brain is fine with me. Click on save and OK. And then once you're completely done, we're going to be sharing this in our discussion board. So make sure you go to file, save as, and switch this over to JPEG. So we have a JPEG file as well. I'm going to click save now. And now we have an option, JPEG options, on how much compression we want. You can leave it as a large file, that's fine, and click OK. So now that we're done with this, I'm going to close it, and we're all done with this chapter. I hope you had fun and you learned some stuff because we're going to keep using these types of tools in our future assignments.